Hi, this is Kate. And Julian. And David. And Arkady. And Henry. And Melissa. And Alex. And Sarah. And Jasper. And Peter. And Ever. From Minute Earth. For the last seven years or so, we've worked as a team, remotely. Like, totally remotely. I didn't meet a single member of Minute Earth in person for more than a year. And it took me five years to de-virtualize the farthest flung team members. Needless to say, we've learned a lot about how to work together as a team while not actually being together as a team. Lots of people have some experience working remotely, and lots of people have experience working on teams. But we imagine there are a bunch of you who, for reasons, are just starting to work remotely on teams. So we wanted to share some of the strategies that have worked best for us. Let's start with the big stuff. Obviously, you need an organized way to communicate and collaborate. The most transformative tool for us working remotely has been Slack, which helps organize our questions, decisions, and conversations, and side conversations, and side side conversations in a way that email can't. In fact, we've actually outlawed all internal email, which has been critical in making sure everything is in one place and we can find what we need easily. But written communication sometimes sucks. In a normal office, when you have an idea or a question, you might stop by a coworker's desk to chat because actually talking to someone can be way more efficient than typing to them. So we have a team rule that you can call anyone at any time, just as if you were popping into their cubicle. But we also have a rule that you don't have to answer because despite working from home, you don't always have to be working when you're at home. And another thing about these calls, unless our webcam is on the fritz, we always turn on the video, no matter how we look that day or what's going on in the background. Because the other benefit of video calls is that they make remote work feel less remote, and actually seeing someone's face is really critical to that human connection. We also consciously build times into our schedule to connect with and check in on each other. Aside from weekly team meetings, our visuals team has an illustrator party every Thursday. And others of us have a way classier director's soiree every Friday. Which they invented because they were jealous of the illustrator's parties. And we have a virtual holiday party every year, shared refreshments and all. All this connecting and team love is great, but say you're actually trying to get some work done. Collaborating remotely sometimes feels like herding cats or herding visual, visual cats. That doesn't even make sense. Or herding virtual cats, which is definitely harder. So we do what we can to simulate working side by side. We always use a single time zone to schedule meetings and deadlines. Although somewhat ridiculously, nobody on our team currently lives in that time zone. We use a shared Dropbox so we're all working from the same set of files. We use Google Docs instead of Word so we can work in the same document, often at the very same time. And we rely on a communal spreadsheet to keep our files, projects, and deadlines organized and easily accessible. Ours has gotten so complex and all-knowing that we affectionately call it Little Skynet. Then there's feedback. <sighs> Giving and getting feedback can be tough in person, but it's a downright minefield when you're collaborating remotely. So we have spent a lot of time learning how to avoid missteps. To head off confusion, we try to give feedback that's as clear as possible, either by making specific written suggestions or by sharing our screen and sketching out an idea in the same way you might use a whiteboard in person. And while people naturally praise others when they're working side by side, we're much less likely to convey that positive stuff when we communicate virtually. And that can both be a morale killer and give the wrong impression. So we make a really conscious effort to include positive feedback. Finally, there's nothing worse than feeling like the time you spent reviewing something went to waste. We not only try to respond to comments we dismissed, but we also preserve every bit of feedback we gather along the way. For instance, after every round of comments on a script, we copy the marked up version and paste it at the top of the doc before revising, so that we can all see how our feedback has helped shape the final product. That's really what it comes down to for us, making sure we're willing and able to hear everyone's voice on our team even when we're not within shouting distance. As we've learned, you can't spell Minute Earth without team. Or urine. Or human. Or eutherian. Or mutant. Or nitrate. Or art. Or hairnet. Or 13. Or nut meat. Or termite. With all that said, we still face plenty of challenges working together remotely. Feel free to share your struggles and your suggestions in the comments so we can all learn from each other. Remotely, of course. 
This video was pretty different from our normal fare, and we'd like to thank our sponsor, Brilliant, for helping us make it happen. And if you're stuck at home and looking for something to challenge you other than work, check out what the folks at Brilliant have to offer. They understand that the best way to get better at anything is to set a goal for yourself and then work at that goal a little bit every day. Brilliant's math, science, and computer science content will help guide you to mastery by taking a complex concept, like, say, understanding neural networks, and breaking it up into bite-sized, understandable chunks. You'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. Just go to brilliant.org slash minute earth and sign up for free. As a bonus for Minute Earth viewers, the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org slash Minute Earth.